What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the Home Theater Hobbies. And today I wanna to talk to you about these speakers, the Kef LS50 Wireless 2s. Now, the LS50 line from Kef is basically legendary. It started in 2011 with the original LS50s. They were a pair of passive speakers. And since then they've released the LS50 Wireless, the LS50 Metas, and again, these, the LS50 Wireless 2s. And not only has the press given these many awards and really like them, but the owners seem to love the LS50 line. I mean, they're always saying, oh, I have the LS50s, I have the LS50 Metas, and I love them. I'll never buy any more speakers. And quite frankly, as someone who doesn't own a pair of LS50s, it's kind of like, why do you like these speakers so much? You know, how do they sound? What makes them so special? And that's what I want to talk about in this particular video, because I went into this review kind of looking for what is special about these speakers. And yeah, that's what I want to talk about. But before I do, if you enjoy this type of content, why don't you give us a thumbs up and hit that subscription button and that notification bell so you can be alerted anytime I upload new content. Also, if you want to purchase these or anything else from Kev, use those links in the description below. Thank you. Now, before I tell you why I think owners really love these speakers, let's talk about what they actually are. This is a pair of active or powered bookshelf speakers, which means you can sit them on speaker stands like I have here, or you can sit them on a tabletop or desktop, plug them into your favorite device and begin listening to your favorite content. Now, Kev does sell speaker stands that match these speakers if you want them, or you can put them on stands like I have here. Now in the cabinet, they have amplifiers built in. So all you need to do is plug them into the wall. No need for separate amplification. Now each one of these speakers has two amplifiers built in, one for the tweeter and one for the mid-range bass woofer. And that amplifier is actually after the crossover. So only the very specific frequencies get sent to the amplifier, which then produces sound from the driver. So that's really cool and I think it does clean it up. Now, one of the big advantages to this over the original LS50 wireless is they use the 12th generation UniQ driver along with meta material inside the cabinet. Now, that meta material is there to dampen the unwanted frequencies from the driver and therefore give you a cleaner sound. Now, I wasn't able to listen to the original LS50 wireless, but I can say that the sound from this is nice and clean. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the sound quality section. Now, while we're here, we should probably talk about a few other upgrades as compared to the original LS50 wireless. These are Rune ready. They also have Chromecast built in. They support Apple AirPlay 2. They also support MQA and DSD 256. So more support for higher resolution formats. They also play more high res content in that they support up to 384 kilohertz at 24 bit. While the original LS50s, LS50 wireless rather supported up to 192 kilohertz at 24 bits. So these support a wider range of formats. That's good. They also have more support for more streaming services, not just Spotify and Tidal, but also Cobuzz, Deezer, Amazon Music, Apple Music, all within the app. So there's a lot to like about this new version. Another reason I think people like the LS50 line so much is that they just look fantastic. I mean, look at all these curves. Look at the attention to detail in the front and back of these speakers. The original LS50s came in a gloss black and a gloss white. They still look fantastic today. These come in matte surface finishes and there are four of them. There's a black, there's a white, there's a red, and there's also what I have here, the titanium gray. Now in general, gray can sound a bit drab, right? But this looks really good. Not just because the surface finish looks good, but the drivers really accent it. I mean, the center is this sort of copper salmon color, really pop. You've got that aluminum driver in the center that's also silver, and there are ridges that flow out from the driver. Even in this black surround, that's a nice accent color, there are ridges there. And so Kef has done a great job just giving us the design on the front but that carries over onto the back as well because this port has that same copper salmon color and is surrounded by black with ridges. And you don't look at the back of the speaker, but that attention to detail is there. These are going to look good in pretty much any home, any decor, because it's just a nice design. And like I said, the original LS50s still look good today. 
And while I'm back here, let's talk about connections. This is the primary speaker. This is what you're gonna connect all your devices to, whether it be TV with HDMI, an optical connection, a coax connection. There's even an auxiliary connection if you have a turntable. There's a Bluetooth pairing button, and there are two ethernet jacks. One for network, so you can go wired, and one for the interconnect between the two speakers if you decide to go that route. There's a Bluetooth pairing button, so you can do Bluetooth. And again, another pairing button for both of the speakers if you want to wirelessly pair them. From the factory, they come paired, but if they, for whatever reason, unpair, you can easily pair them that way. There's also a sub connection on both the primary and secondary speaker. That way, if you have dual subs, you can use them. But if you only have a single sub, you can plug it into whichever speaker is the closest. And one other feature I should mention, the primary speaker can be made left or right inside the app so you can adjust it for your setup. So we've talked about design, we've talked about connectivity. Another reason I think owners really like the Wireless 2 specifically is ease of setup and ease of use. Kef gives three different ways that you can control these speakers. The first is on the primary speaker. There's a little touch surface on the top that has power, volume adjustment, and source selection. And that's the little startup chime that you can turn off and on inside the app. But they also give us a remote. And this remote, again, does all the things that you expect a remote to do, including play, pause, and skip forward, skip back. Now, this is an IR remote, so it will need to be pointed at the primary speaker, basically in the center, to adjust it. But you do get a nice handheld remote. It's not backlit, but you do get a nice remote. They also have the Kef connect app and this is what i mainly use to use these speakers you can basically do everything input selection change the volume you can sign into your apps whether it be cobus title spotify whatever and bring up the playlist and play the high res files right from here there's also a lot of adjustments in this app. You can set the distance away from the wall so you get the optimal sound. You can select one or two subwoofers, the crossover frequency. There is so much here. But the thing that is really cool about this app is it's so easy to use. When I was setting this up, all I needed to do was plug in power, plug in my network cable, it found it and started playing, right? It was so easy. And I think, again, that's the thing that makes this different and in my way, in my opinion, a little bit better than some other speakers. It's just easy to use. You don't really have to think about. I could give this app, put it on someone's phone that's not technically savvy and they could use these speakers. And that's really cool. Now, while I'm here and I have the app out, I'm going to play a quick song so that you can hear this make sound, but I'm not gonna play it too long because otherwise this video will get taken down by YouTube. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, I like the Pink Panther theme song because there's kind of a lot going on there. There's bass, there's high end, there's clarity, and that brings me on to sound. And quite frankly, I can see why a lot of people like this speaker because the sound really is good. I mean, it's clear and clean, but yet full, robust, and smooth. And I think it's based on the way they kind of tune the speaker. At the high end, at the treble part, you heard the bell in there. It just rings clean and true. But then you have the mid range that comes in and that gives you a fuller, richer sound, especially with voices. And there's a lot of depth to the image. I was listening to a live concert and the artist was front and center where you expected them to be. And the band was behind them. And you could hear that when you're listening to these speakers. They have great depth to the sound. Now, when you move into that bass regime, bass is nice and smooth and robust and decently detailed. It'll easily play down to 50 hertz and you can go into the app and go into extended mode and it'll play down to 40 hertz and it plays music bass great. Now I was watching movies and I was watching Jurassic Park and I was watching a scene where uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex comes out and there's a lot of heavy bass and these sound good, but I connected a subwoofer and it sounded much, much better. I have to be honest. Uh, the bass was deeper and more detailed with a subwoofer. These can handle bass, but when you're watching movies, especially action movies with a lot of bass heavy stuff, I would say go with a subwoofer. But when it comes down to music, I think this does a great job in the bass department. Now, I've already alluded to the imaging a bit. Things are placed in the soundstage where they should be. There's a lot of depth to the image. That's one of the big features that I like about this particular speaker. I actually found that the mid-range is a little bit more prominent than both the 
treble and the bass and that means that voices again are going to have some depth to them compared to the band now as far as the sweet spot is concerned it actually produces a nice wide sweet spot i was able to sit with these towed directly into my seat and move over a seat and not lose the image if you move over two seats yeah, I did lose it a little bit, but moving over one seat in one direction or another, it actually held the image quite well. And you could tow them in just a little bit more and probably find an even better sweet spot, but I would definitely play around with that. I would also play around with the distance away from the wall and set it up in the app to really get an optimal listening position with these speakers because they can sound fantastic. Now, if I had to say there's a drawback to the sound of these speakers, I would say it's in the mid range. It is rich and full and almost a little bit warm, especially with vocals. So if you don't like that type of sound, you might not like these speakers. But if you like that type of sound, it does sound good. I don't mind it. I actually think it adds a little bit of depth to the image. But again, that's just a personal preference. Now, that brings me to my recommendation. Do I recommend these speakers? I do. I think they sound fantastic. I think they look good. They're easy to use easy to set up the connection between the two speakers is rock solid i mean this is just a winner the app is easy to use and there's a lot of adjustments you can do there it's just a really good speaker the only drawback is the price they are twenty eight hundred dollars and right now as i record this they're on sale for twenty three hundred dollars so if you want to purchase these go ahead and do it now use that link in the description below but I don't want to say that they're for everybody because honestly, everybody can't afford these speakers. But if you can, you are getting some good quality speakers that handles all the basics very, very well. So if you want to purchase these or anything else, use that link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.